Today I'm going to look at discrete probabilities in Microsoft Excel through some examples and the three distributions I'm looking at are the binomial, the geometric, and the Poisson. These are all discrete random variables. And uh, so here we, you see I have some questions. The first one being what is the probability of rolling six fives and 20 die rolls? Okay, so anytime you're counting the number of successes out of a fixed number of trials, that's a binomial situation. And binomial needs two parameters to be defined. Uh, the first is the number of trials. So since I'm rolling 20 die, 20 dice, we're going to have 20 as n. And the probability of success would be, well, success would be rolling a 5. So a probability of success is a 1 out of 6 shot. So there's your probability of success. And the question here is asking, what's the probability that my random variable x equals 6? Right, I want 6 fives out of 20 dice rolls. Okay, so the way you do that is you say binome.dist, the, the number, then you put in n, so I'll reference that cell, b5, um, p, which is b6, and then true or false. Now, if it's equals, you will say false. Equals is, is false. All right, so I didn't evaluate anything because I didn't put the equals in front. Now Microsoft Excel knows that this is trying to um, call some sort of function. And there's my probability. Probability of getting exactly six dice rolls, or six fives, is about 6.47%. All right, so let's look at the next one. What is the probability of drawing at least 10 Legos before drawing a red one? Well, actually, the way this question's written, it would be very difficult to do. What we need to know is how many colors we have. So why don't we say a uh, red one where there are seven color options. And I just made up a number. Okay, so now we're not counting the number of successes. We're counting the number of trials before success here. Um, and we're assuming that all the colors are evenly distributed. So this would be a geometric distribution, and the only thing you really need for a geometric dis uh, distribution to be defined is a p, probability of success. And so here I'm going to assume that all the, there's an equal number of color Legos, or Legos of each color here. So my p here is going to be 1 out of 7. The red represents 1 seventh of the Legos available, so there's my probability of success. Now, the question here is asking at least 10 at least 10. So that means 10 or more. So that's 10, x is greater than or equal to 10. Okay, now the thing is Excel doesn't have a greater than or equal to function. All it has is equal to or less than or equal to. So what we'll have to say then is 1 minus probability of x being less than 10. But again, there's no less than 10. So in the discrete case, when we're only counting integers, we would say less than or equal to 9. And so that's actually what we're going to have to plug in. Because and the reason these are both the same is because there is no 9 and a half, for example. All right, so now this is a geometric distribution. There is no geometric function in Excel. What we'd have to use is negative binomial. So we use neg binome.dist okay and you want the number where we say number of failures so if I'm doing less than or equal to 9 that means I have 8 failures with one success and for geometric that there will always be one success negative binomial is a little more general than geometric but that's what we're going to do here the probability of success is that 1 7th, so we'll say B9. And true or false, since I want less than or equals to, and not just equal to, I'll put true. Okay, now this is not quite correct because I didn't say 1 minus. So 1 minus would be 
the opposite of less than or equal to 9, which is greater than or equal to 10. And so there you have it. You have about a 25% chance of having to draw 10 Legos or more before you get your first red one. Okay, the next question. So now we're given an intersection averages 3 wrecks a month. What is the probability of exact, exactly 5 wrecks this month? So anytime you have a fixed interval of time and you're counting the number of occurrences in a fixed interval, I know that that's a Poisson distribution. And what you need for Poisson is some sort of average that we'll call mu. And so here my Poisson average is 3 wrecks per month. So now the question is asking, what's the probability that my random variable takes on exactly the value 5? In other words, there are exactly 5 wrecks this month. So to compute that, it's just like the last two. I'm going to say equals Poisson dot dist. Now I need a value. Value is 5. A mean is 3. So I'll say B14, referencing that cell. And since I have equals to this time, not less than or equals to, I'm going to have false for this last value. And there it is. The probability we'll have exactly five wrecks this month is about 10%. Okay, so now I did one example of each of these types of distributions. And in particular in Excel, you have to say binome.dist for binomial. For geometric, you have to use neg binome.dist and your x value needs to go down one. And then for Poisson, you say Poisson.dist. All right, for these last four questions, I want to show the difference of uh, the different ways in setting up these inequalities. For example, in this example two, we had probabilities greater than or equal to 10, and then you had to switch it to one minus probabil probability of x being less than or equal to nine. How do you keep up with that? So I'm going to show the different situations you can encounter with the same type question. So now we assume that we're taking a 20 question multiple choice exam and each question has four choices and we'll assume one of those is correct. So this is a binomial situation with n and p, n being the number of trials, so we have 20 questions. Probability of success would be one out of four, so it's 0.25. And now, because remember binomial is the number of successes out of n trials. So now for this qu first question, I'm asking, what's the probability I get exactly 12 correct guesses? All right, so we know how to do this then. We say equals binome.dist, number of successes is 12. The number of trials is J18, with the probability of excess being J19. And this is false, since we want exactly equals. So there it is. So you don't have a good chance of getting exactly 12. Okay, so what about at most 12? At most 12 means 12 or less. So we're doing le less than or equal to 12. So to calculate that, we do binome.dist number of trials, the trial number, J18, probability of success, J19. And this time we want true. True is less than or equals to. So you have a 99.98% probability of getting 12 or fewer correct by guessing. Next we have the probability of x being greater than 12. So Excel doesn't have a greater than, so what we want to do is the opposite. And the opposite of greater than will be 1 minus probability of less than or equal to 12. Now I do have a less than or equal to situation, so this would be one minus binome.dist number of trials, 12, trial number, J18, probability of success, J19, and this would be true. So you have a point zero 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 or zero 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 one eight four chance of getting more than 12 correct answers. Okay, but probability of at least 12, at least means 12 or more. So I'm doing greater than or equal to 12. Okay, so again, there's no greater than or equal to. So the opposite of that is less than 12. There's no strictly less than 12 either. We would have to say 1 minus probability of x as being less than or equal to 11. 
because there is no 12 and a half. So now that's going to be 1 minus binome dot dist number of successes, this time is 11, number of trials, J18, number of probability of success, J19, and here we want true. So there's uh, greater than or equal to 12 guesses correct. And this last one is the probability of being x less than 12 exactly. So this is what we just did. There is no less than 12. We have to do less than or equal to 11. And so here we say equals binome.dist 11. J18 is the trial number. J19 is the probability. And we want true. So there it is. Less than or equal to 12, you have a 99.91% .91 chance of getting less than 12 correct guesses. Now, um, I hope this answers some questions on how to use Excel and how to understand discrete probabilities in general. I picked this question in particular because uh, uh, getting 12 correct answers would be a passing grade. And that's the fewest you need to get a passing grade on a multiple choice exam with 20 questions. So the probability of you actually passing, if you randomly guess, is about right here, 0 0.0009. So the probability of failing would be 99.91%. So the moral of the story there is you need a study. Of course you do. All right, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. I uh, appreciate you watching. I hope this helped. Thank you.